Lord be with you. This is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We pray that you all have a blessed Thanksgiving, especially this day as we're thankful for the gifts that God gives to us in his very word and with his body and blood and the Holy Communion. The best way to follow along is to place your worship folder in the back of your hymnal. The panel serves as a guide. Simply go to the page indicate. The page indicated, you'll note that the choir sings several verses uh, on some of the hymns, so please note that. That's it for announcements for this morning. Please stand. The bells will call us to worship. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are here. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Please kneel for confession and absolution. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake, forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, your mercies are new every morning, and you graciously provide for all our needs, body and soul. Grant us your Holy Spirit, that we may acknowledge your goodness, give thanks for your benefits, and serve you in willing obedience all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Old Testament reading for Thanksgiving is from Deuteronomy chapter 8. The whole commandment that I command you today you shall be careful to do, that you may live and multiply and go in and possess the land that the Lord swore to give to your fathers. And you shall remember the whole way that the Lord your God has led you these 40 years in the wilderness, that he might humble you, testing you to know what is in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. And he humbled you and let you hunger and fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you know that man does not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Your clothing did not wear out on you, and your foot did not swell those forty years. Know then in your heart that as a man disciplines his son, the Lord your God disciplines you. So you shall keep the commandments of the Lord your God by walking in his ways, and by fearing him. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land of brooks of water, of fountains and springs, flowing out in the valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive trees and honey, a land in which you will eat bread without scarcity, in which you will lack nothing, a land whose stones are iron, and out of whose hills you can dig copper. And you shall eat and be full, and you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from Philippians chapter 4. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. 
Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there's any excellence, if there's anything worthy of praise, think about these things. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at length you have revived your concern for me. You were indeed concerned for me, but you had no opportunity. Not that I am speaking of being in need, for I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. I know how to be brought low, and I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Yet it was kind of you to share my trouble, and you Philippians know yourselves that in the beginning of the gospel, when I left Macedonia, no church entered into partnership with me in giving and receiving, except you only. Even in Thessalonica, you sent me help for my needs once again. Not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit that increases to your credit. I have received full payment and more. I am well supplied, having received from Aphroditus the gifts you sent, a fragrant offering, a sacrifice acceptable and pleasing to God, and my God will supply every need of yours according to the riches in glory in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. According to St. Luke, the 17th chapter. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was passing along between Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered a village, he was met by ten lepers who stood at a distance and lifted up their voices, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice, and he fell on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. Now he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus answered, We're not ten cleansed? Where are the nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Rise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten. 
text for this evening's sermon as we celebrate Thanksgiving is taken from the gospel lesson with special emphasis on the following words of Jesus. Rise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. This is our text. You may be seated. Dear brothers and sisters of our Lord Jesus Christ, Thanksgiving is the busiest travel time of the year. People go home. We go home to be with family. We leave our isolation and our inward focus for a day or two to be with others and focus on them. We share ourselves and give of ourselves. On Thanksgiving, time is not the enemy. It's something to be shared. We make an effort for others to cook for them, to be with them, to tell them how much we appreciate them. It feels right, like the way things should be, because it is. Thankfulness is something that we cannot do well in isolation or by ourselves. Thankfulness is best done with others, is best shared with others, and includes sharing ourselves and what we have with others, especially those in need. In our increasingly individualistic and isolated world where Friends are virtual. Names are a list in our contacts. Phones are answered by machines or voicemails. And conversation is by text. Where we are together less and less. Thankfulness is a rare commodity. It's not only that we've squeezed others out of our lives. How often does God, too, get squeezed out? I mean, we seem to be doing just fine without him, don't you think? We get what we need from our knowledge of the world, from nature, from medicine, from science, not God, or so we think. I mean, rain doesn't come from God, it comes from a low pressure system. The harvest comes from genetically engineered seeds, GPS guided plowing and reaping, and well timed irrigation. My healing comes from a pill or an operation, or stem cells recreating in our bodies what time and disease has taken away. That's how we look at it in our day and age. In this way of thinking, God is so, so very far from our thoughts, our lives, and our realities that giving thanks to him is just simply not on the radar screen. I mean, why bother? This is what happens when we don't get together with him where he has promised to be, in the place of his name, to hear him speak to us in his word. And for us to talk to him in our prayers, when we don't do those things, we are far, far away from God. And when we fail to join with him at his table for his weekly Thanksgiving feast called the Eucharist, which literally means Thanksgiving. Other names, the Lord's Supper or Holy Communion. When we fail to do those things. God seems far, far away. And we 
think we're getting along just fine, that we really don't need him. That's how it goes with us. But then something goes wrong. Rains become floods. The harvest comes in short or gets stuck in the supply line. The medicine doesn't work, and sickness becomes death. And then we wonder why God is so far away. But that's where we put him, isn't it? We all do it. But then something happens when something goes wrong. God brings communities together to be instruments of his grace and mercy, to help people in need. I mean, think of disasters like hurricanes or tornadoes where whole towns or cities are wiped out and and people come, they flock in from all over the world to help, to care, to give. And there's thanksgiving. Think about what happened on Sunday night. A man totally troubled, all messed up, drives through a holiday parade, killing the youngest of the young and the oldest of the old, and hurting so many people, so many families. But what happened? Moms and dads who were there to watch a parade ran out and took care of other people's children. The children took care of the parents and the grannies in the parade. The paramedics, the police, the doctors, the nurses, they ran out there to be instruments of God's mercy and care, his love, to bring about healing, to put things back together again. That's how God works through our vocations. He makes us instruments of his grace and mercy. We are created by God to love each other and care for each other as he has loved and cared for us. And often it seems we only wake up to this fact when something goes wrong. In the midst of something gone horribly wrong, there is something right. That our eyes are open to see the hand of God at work in us. The hand that has been working all along, even though we didn't see it. We were just blinded by our sin, our stuff our success, our busyness with trying to get things done. So how fortunate when what is blinding us is taken away and we see again God at work among us. And as we see again, there is thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is about seeing again, seeing each other just Not just as a name on a list or a friend with a like, but seeing each other as gifts of God, all of us. All of us. Instruments of God's grace and mercy. So it was on the road that day that marked the border between Samaria and Galilee that a traveler came and broke the isolation of ten lepers. God comes in Christ into our world. He comes to help. The psalmist writes, where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. God in the flesh had come to be with his people, to share of himself, to give of himself, to give healing and life. 
this Samaritan, an outsider among the Jews and an outcast because of his leprosy, got not only the gift of healing, but God brought him into a family, his family that knows no bounds, that is of every tribe, nation, and people. That's what our Lord did for him. In Christ, there are no haves or have-nots. There just aren't. There is neither male nor female, Jew or Greek, slave or free. We hear from our Lord that we're all one in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And thanks be to God for that. We need to get back together. We need to reconcile, all of us, in the way of repentance and the forgiveness of sins. It is the same God and the flesh God with us who then traveled the road to Jerusalem to give even more, to go to the cross, to give himself and his life for us that we might be reconciled with God and with each other. Jesus literally destroyed the dividing wall of hostility, the scriptures say, through his death and resurrection. Everything that separates us. And we hear so much of hostility between the races, don't we? Well, I got news for you. This isn't a white church. This isn't a black church. It's not a Hispanic church. It's not a Native American church. It's not an a Asian church. It's the church. And here's how the Apostle Peter describes it. We are living stones. We are made alive. All stones with you, our own uniqueness, our own unique colors and gifts and, and things that we bring to the whole thing. We are living stones, he says, built on the foundation of the prophets and apostles, and listen carefully, with Christ Jesus as the chief cornerstone. He is what holds us together. He is what makes it so we work together, regardless of where we come from, regardless of what we've done in the past. Lately, I've had some interesting things happen around here. I got former atheists who have joined the church. <laughs> Isn't that great? And I'm sitting here and I'm looking at this. This is called the Preacher's Bible. This is, I got one, my name on it, and Pastor Burr got one with his name on it. It's from a member of our congregation who just a few years ago was an atheist. Now he's assisting us in bringing a word into the hearts and lives of others that reconciles us, that sees every human being as important. Every one of us. No matter where we are, God comes to us in Christ. You don't believe in him? He goes to you to make a believer out of you. And you know what a believer is? It's simply a receiver of his gifts. No matter where you are. No matter what you've done. Thanks be to God for that. This is what God does. And that's why it's important that even, that even when we push him far, far away, he keeps coming near. Not to condemn, but to forgive me, you, and all of us. To bring us together and to love one another as he has loved us. So it is this night, the same God comes to us in the flesh by his spirit at work through his word. That's what he promises. And I got news for you, it changes people's hearts and lives. It really does. 
Man does not live by bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. With a word, God created us to be the objects of his love. With a word, he redeems us by delivering into our hearts and lives the forgiveness, life, and peace that he won for us in his suffering, death, and resurrection so that we can look forward to a new heaven, a new earth, the home of righteousness, as you heard from last Sunday, the home where everything is good and right, where everything is as it is supposed to be. So tonight, you've come here to be with family, didn't you? A family of God in Christ. A family that transcends space and time. You have come to enjoy Thanksgiving with your brothers and sisters in Christ from every generation and from every nation, tribe, and people. For in this Eucharist, this Thanksgiving meal, we are bodied and blooded together with Christ and with one another. We're family. We're family with people on the other side of the world. And we join with them, they join with us in giving thanksgiving to God for the created gifts, but most important at all, of all, for the gifts that are eternal that give us life with God and one another throughout all eternity. We are joined into a communion even with those who have gone before us. Jesus is Lord. He's God. He invaded this world in order to resurrect and recreate us and to give us a place where we can live with God and one another in paradise. And so whenever we gather in his name to hear his word, there's a great company of saints who surround us, as the writer of the Hebrews reminds us. And our Lord himself is here too, to love you, to forgive you, to reconcile you with him and one another, to bring us into a communion, a oneness, that endures to eternal life. It feels right, like the way things should be, because it is. Happy Thanksgiving. Amen. Now may the peace of God that surpasses all understanding guard our hearts and our lives in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, we adore you as the God and Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus. And with the whole church on earth and all the hosts of heaven, we ascribe to you honor and glory, blessing, thanksgiving, and praise. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord God Almighty. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. You created us in your own image and redeemed us with the precious blood of your Son. By your spirit, you sanctified us and called us out of darkness into marvelous light. For all of this, we are thankful. Most merciful Father, with compassion, you hear the cries of your people in great distress, especially those who suffer physically, emotionally, and spiritually in the aftermath of the events in Waukesha. Be with all who now endure affliction and calamity. And comfort the families of those who mourn those who died in this tragedy. Bless the work of those who bring rescue and relief, help and healing to those who are broken and bruised. Grant the pastors and people of our congregations in the area to be a bright light of hope in this midst of such darkness. Enable us to aid and comfort those who are suffering in our own community, that they might find renewed hope and purpose as we point this and future generations to you, O oh Jesus. Grant that we may with thankful hearts receive all of your great mercies and express our gratitude always, not only with our lips, but also in our lives as we give ourselves to your service and walk before you in holiness and righteousness 
all of our days. Give us faith that works in love, the hope that never disappoints, the kindness that never fails, the confidence in you that never wavers, patience that does not grow weary, and courage always ready to confess Christ, that we may live in your mercy and die in your peace. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We give thanks to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death so that we may not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. In your righteous judgment you condemned the sin of Adam and Eve, who ate the forbidden fruit, and you justly barred them and all their children from the tree of life. Yet in your great mercy you promised salvation by a second Adam, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and made his cross a life-giving tree for all who trust in him. We give you thanks for the redemption you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Grant us your Holy Spirit, that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruits of his cross and receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in his body and blood. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them saying, Drink of it all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Peace of the Lord be with you always.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in body and soul, the life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. 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 thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you, and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen.